This is the new 2024 Toyota Sequoia Capstone. Recently redesigned, the Sequoia is on a fresh start with a new hybrid powertrain, some really cool features inside, and more. But with the tough competition out there, is this 2024 Toyota Sequoia the best option in 2024? Let's go ahead and find out. The Sequoia is probably one of the most stylish vehicles in the segment, so let's see what you get. Each trim level gets its own exclusive grille, so that's why it's extra special to buy this capstone. You get a really cool chrome mesh grille, and I think the color on this is perfect. You even get a blue Toyota badge, functional vents at the bottom, and an aluminum piece. You also will be getting fully LED headlights with the new design, and on this capstone model, you even get fog lights at the bottom and sequential turn signals, which I think look amazing. Moving on to the wheels, we have exclusive 22-inch LA wheels, which I think look perfect on this capstone. These will even be shared with the Tundra capstone. Now let's move on to the side profile. You will get a chrome strip that runs along the bottom and curves up, and you also get capstone branding and another chrome strip. The power running boards are helpful to get in, and you even have pro mirror caps with fully loaded mirrors including blind spot monitoring, heating, auto dimming. Now let's move on to the rear end. You will get an aluminum strip that runs in between the taillights, large Sequoia branding down below, and a bumper protector. You also will be getting fully LED taillights with a really cool sequential design which you can get on the platinum and above. Now let's move on to the interior. This is the best place to be when owning a capstone model. Starting with the door panel, we have a very interesting one here. This top part is shaped so that you can rest your arm there, and you even have another leather armrest down below that. You have more leather with white contrast stitching, all of your switch gear, two-person memory seats and open port wood, and a plenty of storage. Getting in is relatively easy with the power running boards, and let's take a look at these seats. These will be perforated semi aniline leather seats, which is the nicest seats you can buy on a Toyota. These will be 14-way power adjustable with a power thigh extension. Now, getting into the interior, pretty easy with the running boards, but let's just take a look at this gorgeous cabin. Moving to the steering wheel, we'll be looking at a very nicely weather-wrapped heated steering wheel. This will also have power tilting and telescoping. Moving to the gauge clusters, this is honestly a mixed bag for me. We're looking at a large 12.3 inch digital display. However, only the left part is customizable, which doesn't make any sense. Coming to the materials, I do expect a lot more on this $80,000 SUV. But the Sequoia delivers with the nice soft touch material along the top, open pore wood, and leather all throughout this beautiful center area. You also have gloss black around the shifter. Coming to storage, this Sequoia also delivers very well with this. We have a little storage tray behind there with a power source, a little bit of room behind the wireless charger, and we have two cup holders if you lift that up. Coming to the center console, we can pull this open and we also can open this up maybe to put a gift card. But you can actually open the whole thing up and you have a ton of room in here, plus coin holders, a drink holder, and two USB ports. Now let's move on to the climate controls. I'm very happy to see that Toyota stuck with buttons and knobs that are completely physical. You see it can toggle right here to adjust the temperature and the fan speed. You can even look at the rear. Toyota will also be providing heated and ventilated seats, three stages of both. Moving on to the infotainment system, this is Toyota's latest design. This is the 14-inch audio multimedia display with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. 
Just take a look at how quick and intuitive that is. You can turn off the beeping if that annoys you. And the nicer thing is that you have a full 360 degree backup camera with multiple different views. Coming up top here, with the mirror we have a normal mirror, a camera mirror, and here we have a full panoramic sunroof that opens for the front part. Now let's move on to the passenger side. Starting with the door panel, this is basically the same as the driver's side with open pore wood, leather, and a lot of storage down below. We also get power running boards and the same semi aniline leather seats. These have 12 way power adjusting instead of 14 ways, so that is just one difference from the driver's side. Now getting in is just as simple with the power running boards and we also have the all weather floor liners. Now just take a look at this passenger side. We have an assist grip to help you get in and we have beautiful weather and open port wood. And if you can see, it will illuminate capstone at nighttime. Now we also get a huge glove box, so let's check that out. We actually have two shelves and another place next to that, which makes this a very practical glove box. This is also finished in plastic, so that makes it easy to clean. Now we do also have vents on this side, one by your head and one by your feet. The Sequoia is a mix of good and bad, and the bad unfortunately starts in the back. I have mentioned in many of my past reviews that the second and third rows are the biggest priority for SUVs. Starting with the door panel, we have a nice armrest here, a sunshade, open port wood, and storage down below. These seats will be the same semi aniline leather with manual reclining. However, you cannot slide it. Getting in is really easy with that little handle right here. And just take a look at how much room I have in this Sequoia. This is definitely an upgrade from last year's model. Now coming down here, we have a third zone of climate control, three stages of heated seats, three stages of ventilated seats, and two USB ports. In addition, you have a household style outlet. Now you do have a nice panoramic sunroof up top, a center console here that you can store two drinks and a little bit of stuff right there. And you have a pretty large seat back pocket. Now, if you do want to give the third row passengers more room, you cannot slide it because there's nothing to slide it with. The second row wasn't so bad, but what about the third row? Getting into the third row is relatively simple. You just pull the handle and the seat folds up. You cannot do that with a car seat installed though. And you just climb the steps into the third row. Now, first impressions of the third row, the seats are not as comfortable. You don't have the same weather as the front two rows. Now you can recline the seats if you need to. You also will have two cup holders, a sunshade, and a USB-C port on both sides. The headroom in here is not that good though. But you can look here and you see you can slide the seats if you need to. Now that would make up for the second row seats being fixed. But let's go ahead and check out the cargo area. Moving, Moving on to the cargo area, unfortunately this is also where the bad part lives. You can pop open the window separately, which I think is great if you need to stick something in there quickly. And you also get a hands-free power tailgate. Now, what the bad part is, is that you only get 11 cubic feet if you have the third row seat slid all the way back. You can double that to 22 cubic feet if you give the third row passengers no room. But you also get a shelf system that goes on three levels, and when you fold down the seats, it will not fold down flat because the battery is right underneath there. So if you put the shelf to level 2, that will match the seat but I would like to see Toyota make improvements to the cargo area of this car. Now let's move on to the powertrain. We have the 3.4 liter turbocharged V6 combined with two electric motors. 
This puts out 437 horsepower and 583 pound-feet of torque combined. This is mated to a 10-speed automatic and gets very good fuel economy for the size at 19 in the city, 24 on the highway, and 21 combined. Now the acceleration on this is pretty brisk, so let's see how that looks. Moving on to the competition, this is a pretty competitive segment. We have the Ford Expedition, the Nissan Armada, the Chevrolet Tahoe, and the GMC Yukon. Now, Toyota is in a good place because this is the most recently redesigned SUV on the market. However, GM is redesigning their SUVs for 2025 and they will be going on sale later in 2024. Moving on to dimensions, the Sequoia measures in at 208 inches in length and 81 inches in width. Now that is going to wrap up today's video on this 2024 Toyota Sequoia Capstone. This is an amazing SUV to buy in 2024 with its hybrid powertrain, its luxurious interior, and it is the most recently redesigned SUV. If you are interested in any vehicle like this, make sure you click the link in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.